this is Candy with eyes to Jesus.blogspot.com and good news, today we are finishing our study through the book of 2 Corinthians. We're going to do the very last chapter and that is 2 Corinthians chapter 13. So please open up your King James Bible and follow along with me. Alright, starting with verse 1. This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. I told you before and foretell you, as if I were present the second time, and be it absent now, I write to them which are heretofore have sinned, and to all other, that if I come again, I will not spare. He's not going to be gentle and coddle them. He's going to give them the hard-hitting truth. Verse 3. Since ye seek a proof, of Christ speaking in me, which to you word is not weak, but is mighty in you. Okay, let's break that verse up a little bit to make sure that it makes sense. They're seeking a proof of Christ speaking in Paul. We just read about in the previous chapter in our last study, he was showing them signs and wonders and mighty deeds. And they're still trying to consider, well, how do we know that Christ is really speaking through you and you aren't tricking us? Okay, so that's the first half of the verse. Since ye seek a proof of Christ speaking in me. The second half of the verse is now referring to Christ. Which to you word is not weak, but is mighty in you. Christ is mighty in you. Continuing with verse 4. For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God towards you. So... Yeah, though he was crucified through weakness because he took on flesh and had to die the death of a person made of the flesh. And we are weak in Christ in that we are in this flesh and we are in this sinful world and our fallen man bodies. We don't have our perfected resurrection bodies yet. All right, continue with verse 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. How many churches are telling you that today? Have you ever heard of that before? This is to all Christians. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. While they're trying to prove if Paul is in Christ or not, wait, look in the mirror, look at yourself. Are you truly in the faith? Are you just marching along, happily following churchianity? Maybe you think you're a Christian and you're going straight to hell. Examine yourself. Are you saved? Examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? If Jesus Christ is not in you via the triune Holy Spirit, you are not saved. You are a reprobate. Verse 6, but I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. He's speaking about him and his fellow apostles. We're not reprobates. Christ is in us. We are Christians. We are saved. Continuing on to verse 7, now I pray to God that ye do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. So he said that he prays that they do no evil, not so that they who planted the church will look good. Hey, look at that church we planted. They don't do evil. We're pretty cool, huh? Not for that reason. But for them, for their benefit, he wants them not to do evil. Uh, for the benefit of the church and the Corinth church members. And he says, so that they appear as honest, even if people slander Paul and the apostles and make people think Paul and the apostles are reprobates, he'd rather think them falsely, falsely accuse him of being reprobates than uh, for the church in Corinth to actually be reprobates. Okay, continuing on with verse 8. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. And Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. No one cometh to the Father but by him. Okay, verse 9. For we are glad when we are weak and ye are strong. For this also we wish, even your perfection. And the Bible says, be ye perfect. Okay, verse 10. Therefore I write these things being absent, lest being present I should use sharpness according to the power which the Lord hath given me to edification and not to destruction. 
And uh, we've read previously in this book that uh, people didn't necessarily like the way Paul spoke in person. Okay, verse 11. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. And being of one mind doesn't mean going along with churchianity, even though what a lot of what churchianity teaches is different from what the Bible teaches. Being of one mind means we follow the Bible regardless of what the world's churches say. The true Christians seek truth. And we follow the truth. Okay, verse 12, wrapping up and concluding the second book of Corinthians. Greet one another with an holy kiss. All the saints salute you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. And that concludes our study through the second book of Corinthians. Have a blessed day.